change in velocity per unit time, otherwise known as acceleration. So the definition of acceleration is change in velocity per unit time. We're going to look at the motion of four different objects and each one has a different characteristic and these are really the main four possibilities when you're looking at changing velocities for motion along a straight line. So motion A, we have a chart with times and velocities and we're going to start by making a motion map and we're going to draw the motion map to scale. So I think we'll use a scale of one centimeter equals one meter per second. At time zero, the object had a velocity of zero, so no velocity vector at this dot. At time one second, the velocity was two meters per second. So to draw that to scale, I need to make a velocity vector that has a length of two centimeters. and then label that at two seconds the velocity is plus four so this velocity vector would be four centimeters long and label it and then at three seconds the velocity is plus six. Which I have a small problem that I am running on top of my scale box. So this is a motion map with the velocity vectors. The next thing we want to look at is how much did the velocity change in each one second time interval? And I'll do this in red. So from 0 to 1 second, we have a change in velocity from 0 to plus 2. So that is a change in velocity of plus 2 meters per second. Then from 1 second to 2 seconds, we go from 2 meters per second to 4 meters per second. So that's a change in velocity again of plus 2 meters per second. And then again, same change in velocity for the third time interval. We can represent the change in velocity also by a vector. So this is positive 2 meters per second. So that would be using my same scale of 1 centimeter is 1 meter per second. That means I need a vector that is two centimeters long to represent that change in velocity. And then same thing for this time interval. And the same thing for this time interval. And what you'll notice is that if we were to take this velocity vector two meters per second, and add to it the change in velocity, which is also two meters per second, we get the velocity at the next time, which is four meters per second. So what we're really doing is we're saying at one second it had a velocity of two, it changed by positive two, which gave us the next velocity of four. And you can see that you can add these vectors by putting them end to end, just like we did with forces, except here they're parallel, so this vector plus this one on the end gives you one that's four centimeters long, representing four meters per second. Now we want to figure out the acceleration. Acceleration is the change in velocity per second, since I'm using seconds for my unit of time. So the change in velocity was two meters per second in every second. So the acceleration for this motion would be two meters per second every second. And we can also draw the acceleration as a vector. So maybe using a scale of one centimeter equals one 
meter per second per second, we would have an acceleration vector that looks like this. Okay, it's a positive acceleration and the acceleration vector points to the right. You'll notice the acceleration vector has the same direction as the change in velocity. The last thing we want to do is sketch the graphs for this motion. So let's make a position time graph and a velocity time graph. And we actually should make an acceleration time graph too. So position, velocity, and acceleration, which got short shrift here. The velocity graph, we can see that we have a steady rate of increase here. So that's going to be linear. And the acceleration we saw was constant. We had the same change in velocity every second. And acceleration is the slope of this velocity time graph. So it's going to be a constant positive value. And it was a positive value of 2. The position time graph, we don't know where it started. So I get to choose that. So I'm going to choose that it started at the origin. And it's going to be the same shape as the ball going down the ramp that we analyzed. So that is going to have a shape that looks like this. And you can check your graphs because if you remember that the slope of this graph is the velocity, you can check and see if it makes sense. So here, if I did a tangent, that would have a slope of zero. And sure enough, at time zero, I have a zero velocity. A little later, I have some kind of a positive velocity. And a little while later, we have a positive velocity. And then later, I have a really positive velocity, so a bigger number that's positive, and that's the same thing we see on the velocity time graph. So you can draw little tangents and qualitatively think about what the slope of the tangent would be to help you make your velocity time graph. I should mention that because we chose the position, because the problem didn't give it, you could also have drawn this shape anywhere else. And it still has the same tangents, which means both of these curves would produce the exact same velocity time graph. So what kind of motion was this? How would we describe it? Well, we can see from this that the object is speeding up and it's moving in the positive direction. So motion A is for an object that is speeding up in the positive direction. Object B. What is object B doing? Well, we can see that the velocity, the magnitude of the velocity is getting smaller. So this object is slowing down, but the velocities are all positive, so it's still moving in the positive direction. So we're going to now be analyzing an object that is slowing down in the positive direction. And we want to look at the motion map and the graphs. So using a scale of one centimeter equals one meter per second, and this being time zero, go ahead and draw your motion map. So your motion map should look like this. The next step is to find out the change in velocity for each time interval and draw a vector to represent the change in velocity. So go ahead and do that step, pause the video, and then check back. So we find that the velocity changes by negative 2 in each time interval. 6 meters per second plus a change of negative 2 gives us 4 meters per second. And this can also be represented as velocity vectors. A negative 2 means that is going to point in the negative direction. So your velocity, so your change in velocity vector points to the left. Thinking about the velocity vectors, let's see if this direction makes sense. So if we have this velocity vector, 6 meters per second, and we add to it this change in velocity, that should give us this velocity vector because whatever velocity you have 
You add to it how much it changes, and that should give you the new velocity. So let's see if that makes sense. If you draw a vector that's six centimeters long, and then you add to it this vector, remember when we add vectors, we put this vector at the tip of it, so that's going to be two centimeters this way, then the new, the result of the adding those vectors together is this one, which would be plus four. Okay, so the velocity plus the change of velocity does give you the new velocity. Our next step is to find the acceleration. So we have a change in velocity of negative two meters per second every second, and that is the acceleration. So the acceleration is negative two meters per second per second. And we can draw this as a vector again using a scale of one centimeter equals one meter per second every second. Now we want to draw our graphs. So what do the graphs look like for an object that is slowing down in the positive direction? Position, velocity, and acceleration. The velocity is going from plus six to plus four to two to zero. So that is going to look like this straight line going down to zero. So whenever the velocity graph reaches this axis, that means the object is stopped because that is a velocity of zero. And our position time graph, to figure that out, velocity is the slope of the position time graph. This is a very big positive number here. This is a sort of positive number here for velocity. And this is a zero value for velocity. So how could we draw a curve on the position time graph such that these are the slopes? Well, very positive slope might look like that. And so, and it is going in the positive direction, so it must be going up, and then later not so positive, and then later zero. So that sounds like a curve that looks like this. And that also makes sense if it's slowing down in different units of time. First unit of time, it's going to go the greatest displacement, and then in the next unit of time, a smaller displacement. And those displacements would keep getting smaller. The slope of the velocity time graph is the acceleration, so we have a negative constant value for the acceleration, which was negative 2 meters per second squared.